oh, this is kind of on theme. Look at yeah. Because it's uh, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah? Empire, no? Hoth. Ah. Hoth. Look, we'll come back to that. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Archie Marathon. Welcome to Green Acres by Austin Maynard Architects. Don't say it. Don't say it. I don't have to say it because Dezine's already said it. The best architects in the world. nice isn't it it is we finished this house a few years ago haven't been here for a while um it is amazing it's amazing to see how well it's holding up hmm quite a view yeah we are on the beautiful amazing but often hostile australian coast where our incredible clients saved up to these incredible views straight down the beach back to the city and then out to the ocean where during winter there are just whales constantly jumping right. and so when i first came here for a meeting yeah i walked along that beach i got the taxi to drop me off early so i yeah. could kind of vibe it and as i came here dolphins were jumping in the water wow there's the sea baths down there just past there people were seeing the swimming the sea baths and I was just like, holy moly, I've got to go tell these people that there's a pot of dolphins. And I turned up and went, there's dolphins out there. And they were just like, yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's where we live. <laughs> that's every day, Andrew. So this is quite different from your usual work. Like we've been looking at inner city, infills. It is quite different. You compare it to Helvetia where, and we talk about the context in that so? a lot, um, density, and trying to get respite from that by having gardens and it kind of looks a bit internalized. Uh, this is the opposite. Like our clients have bought a site that faces the sun, like the way the slope works, it faces the sun. So it's got a great orientation and this big view. And so, so much of the brief is about like, how do we get as much of that view as possible? Which is usually the case for coastal architecture, like houses, they yeah. just go view, glass, yeah. bang. And usually it's actually over roads. <laughs> People just stare in these aquariums. Yeah. Almost over use of glass, you see? Yep. Yep. I, I've often found that weird. Um, we've gone through it a few times. Like we did Dorman House down at Lawn. Um, and it's interesting the discussions you have where people sort of get so anxious about maximizing the view. Mm. And it becomes just about glass pointing out to the ocean. And there's no sense of scale or anything like that. And what, what's great about this is that our clients recognize that the beach and the city in the background, this sort of foreground, middle ground, background. And that's great for a view instead of just like big sky, big ocean. Mm. And that's it though, isn't it? Like, because this house, from what I've seen, there are kind of contrasts, little spaces that that's all the rooms look into, um, where a lot of these houses, they just have a view and that's all they did with it. That's, yeah. That's it. And it's one dimensional. Yeah. Where here you've got this big space where you can have a party and it really is about like overlooking the, the beach, but then you can duck to the little study space, which is sort of more internalized, sort of that thinking space. But then there's this strategic smaller window that has this borrowed view back down to the beach as well. It's a very different experience. Show me that in a second. Cool. Which is why I'm a bit confused about your metaphor for the the Hoff thing. Yeah. Because that is a one single yep. thing. But because what you've done here, it's there may be just that, but there's other in between spaces. And you actually are going through a series of almost pavilion like spaces and transitions into different parts. Yep. So yes, there is that gesture here in this room. Uh, but there's also other bits. You have studied Chinese guns, so there's a lot of lessons from that. There are little moments, you know, just how it interacts with the side fence. Often they are just leftover spaces, whereas you've actually turned them into gardens and each space actually utilizes and, and pushes out that view into something quite small, but it's, it's a special moment. 
and the contrast, and that's the thing we know from Chinese gardens, it's the contrast and the shift in focal length. So you come into a space here and then you're guided through and delivered to a cute little garden and then you reorient and say, like, holy moly, look at that landscape out there. And it's taken away and given back to you over and over, which just makes you appreciate those scales. We deliberately made two bits of architecture. We've got the, the ruinous recycled brick that's sort of just part of the cliffs. This can become this meandering, you know, multi-leveled, um, building made out of recycled brick and then we land that big strong view it is it is the binoculars and so those contrasts again we talk about contrasts of space contrasts of aperture to the view contrasts of form as well and so it means that the snazzy architecture is much smaller mm. even though the house itself is quite big yeah because it's quite heavy downstairs and it's if anything i think it's a bit of homage to some of the older stuff in the the coast it yep. was built out of brick Absolutely, and you'll know from our past work, we, we don't want to just land spaceships. We don't try to here, but we want to connect with the context. What was really on my mind when I design, which is always on my mind, is Star Wars. And I'm not joking, like there's, there's what we, there's the, all the ideas that um, are about the client's brief, but there's also the things on top of that that the designer is interested in. And I really like that idea of the ruinous cliff-like materiality and then this bit of sci-fi sticking on top. And so I, there's this diagram that I did that's just like one of, the, one of the rebels from Hoth holding the binoculars. I was like, that's what I want. I mean, like I've been fascinated by stormtroopers and the idea of that white shell of armor they have and then everything else is black hidden. So the gaps, or wherever there's, you know, all the details of that, it's hidden by black. Oh, yeah. And then even like the, the high tech tubes of like Richard Rogers, we call yeah. them the paper clips here and actually getting those and making them so they land on, they don't go through, they, they actually land on the old brickwork. So it is like a spaceship that's kind of landed here. It might take off at any time. Andrew? Yeah, man. That uh, balustrade there, is that more open on one side and, and more dense on the other? Oh, that's plenty. That is a good pickup. Yes, absolutely. So on this side, where the main view is to the beach and the ocean, we've made it, the, it wider. And where it's on that side and there's more residential, we've put it closer together so you get more screen. Good pickup. So it's a bit like that uh, mist, misting device. It's just denser mist. Misting for the Chinese paintings. Yeah. Dieter Rams of Braun, you know, he said that if something doesn't need to exist, it should disappear. And so I, I just like the fact that you had to really study that to pick that up. We're solving problems, but it doesn't really exist. You don't notice it. I really love this is, so this is the break between the ruinous brick building and the white building. And you can see all the 45s, Kev. Oh yeah. Orientating to the view. But I love this juxtaposition between the blades that go across the top and these ones that come at a 45 and then the louvers on the study window. Oh, yeah. And that's the fin fish pond right there. Only at the special angle you can see it. And apparently, many of the fish try to escape. <laughs> and uh, obliquely, you can't quite see into these spaces. And that would be the, uh, the little garden where the wardrobe was looking out to. Yeah, so the master bedroom back there. And you can see this ruinous sort of, you know, these ruinous pavilions ruinous you know the recycled brick the way they're really heavy and embedded in the earth and then the white building just sits gently on top and look at the detailing oh wow so often you'd see all that flashed just yeah. a great builder that we worked with to get all of that really tight so it is really that expression is very clear but this really is one of the bits i'm most proud of like this could have just been a daggy undercroft where it's like oh get through this bit and get upstairs but we worked so hard to make that a great space Sloping block going down, looking towards the sun and the city and the surf. The big move here for us, you mentioned Chinese gardens. Yeah. The big move was to not just put a front door here. So we've obviously got like the garage, which is one of the few bits actually cut into the site. The rest we've tried to sit on the site. Oh yeah. Do too much excavation. But instead of just having a front door where then you've got to deal with a whole heap of stairs internally, we actually just create more garden and reduce the size of the house by putting all the stairs outside. There's something quite uh, terrace housey about the the deck. Go on. No, the terrace house. 
know the Victorian terrace houses with the metalwork top and bottom. Ah, yeah. The proportion, the way that it's, it's sitting there, it feels kind of classical at the same time. Yeah. What's the, yeah, we get words like innovative and all that get thrown around a lot with um, Austin Manor Architects, but the reality is we are actually quite, we borrowers of traditional things. We just interpret them in different ways. You can see here where we've gone to all that trouble of putting the fiberglass decking on. Instead of looking at the underside of a, a timber deck and it's actually, you know, this got this beautiful soft light coming through that lights the granny flat that's at the bottom. Same thing here, use fiberglass. Black here though, and allowing the garden to go through it. So trying to reduce the amount of solidity, trying to increase the amount of garden. So you've got the brick form of the garage and that's ruinous and decaying. And then we've used the mesh as like this in between, almost feels like a temporary structure in a way. So the garden can grow through. And then that- So that's what you mean by decaying? Yeah, this is sort of broken down to get garden through here. And guess what's not on the stairs and what's not here? Can you see? Uh, balustrade? Yeah, there's no balustrading. So you need to balustrade spaces, otherwise you can fall, unless you do something like this. So nobody's going out there. So you get that clear view out to the city. You don't have this balustrade. So it makes it more about the garden than all of this extra structure. That brick form of the garage stops. It's got the white building sitting on top. And then again, we go back to a broken, you know, the, the transparent, uh, fiberglass stair. So but amazing we can see right through it and the vegetation grows right underneath. And through often as well. Yeah. So you get more garden. If this had been paved, if we had to use the bricks, it would have decreased the amount of garden. It would have increased the amount of heat. In summer, you know, that would have gotten so hot, built up its thermal mass, but instead we get lots of evaporative cooling coming off the gardens. See this, Kev? Growing straight through. Oh, yeah. So the black grating is about the garden and then the white grating is about the white building. And then we come back to where we've got the, the steel structure, just plugging in. And it's the, it's the Stormtrooper outfit. You've got the white shell of the Stormtrooper um, armor. And then behind that where you have mess, that's all just black. So you arrive at a, a little courtyard. courtyard. And importantly, and that's the master bedroom up there. Importantly, you can be sitting out here and I've got the view. And the sun. And the sun as well. So all of that, so you've got the hood there for the passive solar gain as well. And um, so from each space, you get a subtle different relationship to the view. There's basically the front door there. Oh, let's go through the front door, even though this is open. Yeah, and if everybody else is around, you can just have this completely open. But day to day, you're using this as front door. You're not actually in the building, if you have a look. That gesture goes straight through. So it's like, that's the brick building. And that's the, the white, you know, Empire Strikes Back goggles. Coming in, a choice of day area and night areas. Somebody could be having a party there. Somebody can sleep really easily. And here's the axial. Is this, are we on axis in center? Yeah. Yeah, so straight through to the master bedroom, which is the back of the house, and the view. Andrew, there's, a, there's quite a journey to get up here, which yeah. is beautiful, but the clients are requesting a aging place thing, right? Aging in place. So this is their last house. So look at all about incredible, generous cabinetry. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at the colors. Yeah. So there's always a surprise. You've got to add layers of surprise and joy. Isn't that great? Isn't this a great mechanism too? So much storage in there. But the ultimate surprise, you've got all of this storage for the kitchen and the living space. But look at this one, look at this bit of storage. That's the lift. What? So aging in place, you've got this great goods lift. A couple of people can go all the way down to the garage or back up again oh. and, and go to the granny flat. Often lifts are quite ugly kind of thing. You've and designed it into the joinery. Yep. It usually takes up this lump of a space. That's the same with the stairs though. Like if it is quite a way to travel, but if it wasn't out there, it'd be inside and the house would be bigger. You'd have some weird dislocated, 
you know, we, we had the sea drawn through here at one stage and it was just dislocated the space. It's quite connected to the landscape as well, always. Yep. But different kind of landscape, different kind of views, different frame views rather than the view. That's right. And so from here, you get your great little garden, you actually get some great views back to the hills. You get to use this on a really hot day. You kind of want to be in here where it's a bit cooler, but you also get that view. You can be looking at whales and things like that, chatting to people at the dining table. It's the command center. And this is the structure that's started wrapping, sitting on the garden, comes up through, pins there, and then holds these intermediate structures. Gorgeous. This is why architects need to, they need to know their structures. Because if you just ask the engineer to hold it up, it's going to be the simplest thing. But if you know how structure works, you can turn it into part of the narrative of the building. Oh, and that welds against that, does it? Yeah. Okay, so that's actually cut around. And then this balustrade actually, well, yeah, like the fins go around it. Yeah, because that's always the tricky bit. How do you turn around the corner? Yeah. That's pretty cute. And it's great fun. Structure is fun to draw. Even if you're not sure how to do it, just draw it and make a good guess and have a chat to your engineer and builder. Have a look at those blades there. So the same blades, but turn those 45 degrees because there's neighbors' windows there. Oh, yeah. And the same idea to solve a different problem. And then if you're swinging around this way, it's the same thing here. There's lots of neighbors all up that could look down and just turning 45 degrees. Same solution applied differently. Oh, yeah. And I even love like that, that you get the old asbestos roof. <laughs> He's just captured. So the old new parts of the city are here. The studies, it's actually one of my favorite spaces because it's, you can feel it's quieter. It's a bit darker, still connected out to the central garden. And if you sit here though, you get views back to the city and you get this very deliberate. I spent a lot of time in 3D. <laughs> With that house built, trying to work out how you actually get the, you know, the beach and the surf club and everything from this spot. Then when you leave the study, you get this great connection, the seals at the floor level. That's, every space is orientated from that central arrival garden. And then the utility zone, compact but full of storage, everything you need, and another great little courtyard space. So if you're walking, you know, folding your clothes or doing whatever you're doing, you know, it's still got a great outlook. It's not a leftover space. Toilet, of course, with a view. Toilet with a view. And then we come to another space where it's divided, similar to there. You've got natural light on both sides, and that takes you into the master suite. Oh, you got little doors that go out there. I guess that's how you service the guns, right? But again, it feels like you're entering into a different pavilion, which you are. Yeah. We've tried to create a great, unique outlook from each space, but that includes the shower too. I, I love this moment because you get to see all the way along the coast and you get to see uh, Nobby's Hill over there. And then we've found these blinds where you can adjust the height of it. So you can be here covering your nipples and your crutch and you get to look down a garden and you get to look out at view and adjust it as you need to. Oh. Cool. Oh, and the shelves there. Are there shelves? Are there open doors? What's going on there? No, they're just permanent shelves. So all of your junk is hidden away, but easy to get to. You don't have to constantly open and close, oh. but you don't see it from the main circulation. It's a bit like the angled blades you've got there. It is. Yeah, yeah, for privacy. So it's taking in the same motif. Yep. Another view? Yeah, and that's that's the back boundary. So there's a, there's a house right there, and we've designed it so that you just don't know the house is there. And we've also designed it so you don't get um, overlooking. The, we don't interrupt their views. Oh, okay. Their views yeah. have been protected. Ah, the that's whole good. Time. That's important. And that's a little protecting shroud so that they can't see into the space. Yep. Nice. So it still feels connected, open and light, but everybody's privacy is connected. You know this axis that you're currently yeah. holding down. I hate cutting off an axis, so the door to the bedroom, if you're on privacy, oh. is a mirror. So that means that uh, whenever you're down oh, there, hey. you look this way and you get all this extra natural light. It's not just a dead end. 
Well, I'm standing in the middle of it, so there you go that way. Thanks for watching. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.